Ben here, Big Goofy Runner. Today's a bit of a different video. Since the beginning of January, I've been trying to lose some weight, and I've managed to do so. Now, I've been off and on trying to lose weight for a few years now. Nothing I've been doing really has been working, but it's stuck. It's starting to work for, uh, for me now. And uh, since January, I've come down 30 pounds. So in four months, I've come down 30 pounds. So how did I do it? Uh, well, let's, let's talk about that. Uh, so first off, yeah, like I'm down 30 pounds, but I, I have a ways to go yet. Switching to the computer here uh, and cameras here, I'm down 30 pounds since January. Here's a before and after picture. Obviously, I've got a lot more work to go yet, but I've started, I got some stuff going and it's, it's working. But what, again, what? Is working and why to start with I want to say that yeah I'm not a doctor I'm not a nutritionist uh, none of that kind of stuff I'm just a big guy I've had my weight go up my weight go down uh, back and forth and all around uh, for years and uh, this is just kind of my experience and what I've been doing that seems to be working for me over the last four months take it as as you will this is not advice on how to lose weight this is just my story so, what did I do? What did I do? I ate less, and I exercised more. That old chestnut there, that, it, it's true, but how? Is, is the, were the devil's in the details there on this one? It sounds uh, like I'm being super sarcastic, but it's tr that is legitimately what I did. I managed to cut down what I was eating, increase my exercise, and the formula worked. I lost weight. But there's more to it than that. The simple calculation is you got to balance the amount of calories you consume versus the amount of calories you spend. And if you expend more than you can consume, you're going to lose weight. Simple math. But there's a kind of an unspoken piece in there too on the mental game, right? Everyone knows that ca calculation, uh, the how you balance your calories and make it work. But how do you how do you get it to go? Because it takes a lot of calorie, a lot of a calorie deficit to lose a pound of fat. It takes time to do to do that too. I mean, if you're losing weight fast, you're going to be unhealthy. So it takes time. So that calorie deficit. You have to do it over a period of time. And that's where the mental game comes in on making sure you can continue to do what you need to do to lose that weight. And I finally have clicked on a few things that it, things I've done before, but I finally clicked on doing them again and away goes the weight. At this point, I just kind of give you a bit of a background on who I am and my weight in general and that kind of thing. And uh, just to give some context to this weight loss. If I want to go back right to it, I've been fighting my weight essentially since my early teens. And um, ups and downs from there, I've had things that have worked, things that haven't worked. In the modern era, so yeah, 2002, which to me is still kind of modern, I trained heavy. Uh, so I was doing significant training in the gym. I was doing heavy lift, lifting heavy weights. Also, I was doing a lot of running, uh, culminating in that um, uh, in June that year with uh, my first recorded half marathon in an hour and 46 minutes and 11 seconds at about 217 pounds. Uh, I did eventually break that, but I'll get into that later. And that year, I actually trained for a full marathon. Uh, I got hit with some heat stuff a couple weeks before the race, so I backed off to the half, what not being sure I could finish the full, but ended up having a great half. So I've been in shape, and basically from that 2002, kind of came down a little bit in uh, training, maybe got the weight down a little bit, then it comes back up, it goes away. I ran my first full marathon in that kind of period, and then my wife and I had kids. And um, super tired all the time, gave me excuse to be lazy. I, of course, couldn't spend the kind of time at the gym I had been previously. 
weight got bad, did a bunch of things to try and get the weight back down again, did okay. In this time, my wife and I discovered Run Disney and their races. So in that time, I think I'd done a, 2008, I did a, their full marathon down there in January. Uh, and then two years later, I went down and did the their Goofy Challenge, which is a half marathon in one day, full marathon in the next. But it wasn't in prop. It wasn't in shape at all. I think it was two fifty five, two sixty. It was, I was not in shape to do the race. I had not trained properly. I had followed a very rigid plan to get down to marathon shape, two thousand two, two thousand four range. But I wasn't following the plan properly, for those other races, and continued on. I'm like, okay, well, if I'm going to do do this kind of stuff, I need to do it properly. So we come around to two thousand and twelve. And sometime in 2012, I'd actually hit 272 pounds. I got that back down fairly quickly. But in the fall of 2012, I started properly training for Goofy Challenge again in January of 2013. It was 255 about the time I started, and I lost uh, that training program, and I lost 20 pounds about uh, before I got into the Goofy Challenge. What I did there is... I started tracking what I was doing a lot more. So I was writing down everything I was running, uh, making sure I was hitting everything. I, was, I had changed my diet so that I was uh, tracking everything I was eating a lot more, all those kind of things where I tracked it all, weight came down, I was able to train better, and I did a better goofy challenge than I had in the past. But I wanted to still keep getting better. So when I'd run marathons in the past, I had I would do like an 18 week training program to get up to marathon uh, uh, training level. And then, you know, I'd back off for the tra and training after that was done. I didn't do that in January, 2013. I kept going, I kept training, I kept training. And that led into 2014, which is my best year ever for running. And uh, I broke my half marathon PR that year at an hour and 46 at a heavier weight. I was 221 pounds, 222 pounds uh, when I did that one hour 46 half. And I wasn't even, trying to break my PR. Uh, PR'd my full that same, like a month later, did my first uh, ultra marathon, just shy of 50 miles in 12 hours that year, 1,971 miles that year, uh, several months where I got over 200 miles per month, just really hit that year hard. I was tracking everything, spreadsheeting everything, tracking all that kind of stuff. Came into January, 2015, to do Dopey Challenge that year. Dopey Challenge at Disney World is a 5K, 10K, half marathon, full marathon on successive days. And I did really well. Super pleased with how I'd done. Um, on the full marathon, I stopped for 20 plus picture stops. And in the time that took, I still end up basically with a four hour uh, marathon running time, movement time. My overall time was like four hours and 40 minutes, but 40 minutes of that was taken up in uh, character and picture stops. So yeah, so awesome. Did really great. Came home from that. Our treadmill was broken. We bought a new treadmill. That was the start of the downhill slide. This treadmill did awful things to me. Every time I got on, basically I was in peak running condition when we got when I got home and I could not run on that treadmill. Every time I ran on it, I got worse. And it took us six years before I accepted mentally that that thing was actually hurting me. And uh, once I did things, it started to turn around too, but more on that in a little bit. And then over 2015, things started going down, downhill pretty quickly. Uh, and I had some health issues in that time. Here, I think I'm going to bring up, let's bring up a spreadsheet here. Here is my weight over time, starting in January 2014. So we can see here, most of 2014, I'm around the 220 pound mark, sometimes lower, sometimes higher. This low side here correlates with when I did the uh, near 50 miler in 12 hours. Um, so that just all ties into that. So January in here is where the dopey challenge was. And then I got home on the bad treadmill. I couldn't train. I couldn't train. We got the dogs. I wasn't getting very good sleep for a little bit when we got, first got our first puppies. And right about here, I got sick and my weight skyrocketed. I don't want to get into it too much, but uh, black licorice is not your friend. Uh, but then once I got through all that, you see the weight still continued to climb here. It just kept going up and up. And then I started, okay, I got to do something about this. I started training harder. I mean, I still did some big races in here. I did a, a, 
uh, an ultra in here in like April, and I did a uh, uh, another ultra down here um, in October. Right, I did break 50 miles in 12 hours, so that was uh, probably my best ultra yet. So, but that was still on this downwards slope. And I went, okay, well, I got to do something, and I started trying harder and harder to get better, but I just I just couldn't do it. That treadmill just kept breaking me. So that you see the weight keeps coming back up. I get up over 250 in uh, 2017. I'm going to start training again. Train for a goofy challenge. Things like that. Trying harder, trying harder, but nothing works. I can't break anything. I can't get the weight to go down. Uh, here in 2019, I did manage to get the weight to come down a little bit. Uh, but it came back up again right before I did Goofy Challenge again in January 2020. And then super frustrated here. I wasn't measuring myself, wasn't weighing myself. I was just... And then we get into March and we go into lockdown. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. If you want more information on my running and how all that kind of stuff was, BigGoofyRunner.com. I'll have the link down below. But yeah, BigGoofyRunner.com is where I tracked all that stuff, the peaks, the valleys... Uh, what I did for training to get uh, where I needed to go there. Different training programs I'd taken or I'd used during that time. Some I built myself. Most were just kind of uh, bastardized out of others' training programs. But yeah, so that's not super great. So it led me to not being in a great spot when we came into the lockdown. And we, I started working from home. And I've been working from home for well over a year now. And... So when we first started working from home, tweaked in my brain, it's like, okay, now's the time to start eating a little bit healthier. Now's the time to start um, maybe doing some actual exercises, things like that. And that's what I started doing. And my weight did come down a little bit. Right around here is when we went into lockdown in, uh, in March and April. And I started doing a bunch of things like Making sure to, you know, maybe spend a, go walk for a mile on the treadmill, that kind of thing at some point during the day, get a little bit of exercise. Uh, and I was also doing some weights uh, here in the office. So I would, um, you know, grab some 30-pound dumbbells or some 10-pound dumbbells, and I'd just do some exercises. But over time, I started doing more and more exercises, started taking more and more time to do it, and I was like, eh, I need to make sure I get enough of a break at uh, for my work time to do it and basically it stopped happening so i, I had, was on a path to go down i had some things i was doing that was right generally eating healthier but once the weight stuff i wasn't doing the weight stuff as regular weight started to come up because i was at home and while i was eating generally healthier i was also snacking more so the weight went up i fought a little bit uh, when we got the uh, the pool open in the summer so I spent a lot of time in the pool, managed to keep the weight relatively level. Not in a great spot, obviously, but relatively level. But once the pool closes, the weight starts to climb, the weight starts to climb, the weight starts to climb. Uh, culminating at 267, January 3rd and 4th. And uh, while I did have a couple of attempts before Christmas to try and get the weight down, it came back up over Christmas. And part of that has to do with one of the things I found that, uh, that helped me get on track. And I'll get into that in a minute. You can definitely see in the, in the chart there that it started coming down after January 2021. So basically, there are some issues I needed to fix to lose weight. There was a few things I needed to do, and we'll kind of go through those issues and what those did and how each of those kind of lined up in that equation of reducing calories consumed, increasing calories burned, and also fixing and working on the mental game. So issue number one was Coke for me. So this is the, this is the number one thing that I needed to do or deal with. And Coke is, let's call it a full on addiction because if I didn't have it, I craved it and I had headaches. I'd get headaches through the day if I didn't have the Coke. And I couldn't find, figure out if it was the caffeine or if it was the sugar or the combination. I tried just having coffee with sugar, tea with sugar, sweet tea, uh, like nothing worked. Nothing would deal with the headaches and stuff. So that was the first thing I needed to deal with. And I did luck into something that worked on that. I'll come back to that. So 
basically, I was drinking near a two liter of Coke a day, if not more. So there's 800 calories at least that I was consuming a day that were completely empty, no use for me, and they were definitely adding into that weight gain. Issue two, it was it felt like I never had time to exercise, which was weird because I mean I was working from home, so I should have a lot more time. I didn't have commutes and uh, that kind of thing, so I should have had more time, but I just didn't seem to mentally have that time. So I had to deal with that. That's that's part of the mental game. I had to fix the mental issue so that I could actually do more exercising, burn more calories. Issue number three, snacking. My default breakfast for a long time for when I was running to work is because I would be so tired that I would just kind of sleep into the last second and I'd eat a couple pieces of toast on my way out the door. And... Yeah, that wasn't good, and I was continuing that when I was working here from home. I had more time that I could have made something, but I was still doing toast. And, you know, I would that would bring my glycemic index up, that would be like an insulin spike, because uh, white flour for me is, is just as bad as sugar. It just, it hits me hard that way. And so I would consume a couple pieces of toast, feel relatively full, but I'd be hungry again like less than an hour later or an hour later. And because I'd already primed the furnace with, with carbs, I wanted more carbs. And then I found that I was snacking on carbs throughout the whole day, probably consuming who knows how many calories of different carb snacks. And yeah, just not good. So something else I needed to do. And then just exercise in general. So again, um, just finding ways to do lots of exercises. So my work, and my hobbies all had me basically sitting at a desk. No no movement really at all, uh, especially not being in the office building, running up and down stairs here and there to go to meetings and things like that. So even that minor bit of exercise was lost. So I needed to do something to bring that exercise up again. Uh, what did I do? This is, this is where I kind of uh, get more into uh, the actual real details. So uh, in this video, I'm gonna have chapters, so hopefully, uh, yeah, you can kind of hop to the pieces that you need or you want. So issue number one, the one I absolutely needed to deal with was Coke. And I needed to be able to get Coke out of my diet in such a way that I wasn't having these nasty headaches that basically would kill me about 2.33 in the afternoon and I'd have to go lay down and I wouldn't necessarily get a full day work in or, or just whatever. So I needed to deal with that. And I fluked into something that actually worked for me. And I said before that, you know, I tried coffee. I can't drink black coffee. I, I need cream and sugar in my coffee. But even still, uh, if I drank coffee, I could maybe um, offset some Coke early in the day, but I'd still be craving it for later. Uh, and I would still get headaches. Same thing with tea, um, even with sugar in the tea. Closest thing that came to working before was sweet tea, but even still, I wasn't really getting rid of many calories if I managed to use sweet tea. So nothing was working. But so the fluke was is that in December, uh, basically as a bit of a Christmas present for ourselves, uh, got a cold brew coffee pot. So basically just put it in the grounds and the water and you sit it in the fridge over overnight and next morning you've got cold coffee. So to me that just seemed more efficient than um, making a pot of coffee and then putting sugar in it, putting it in the fridge. It was just a different way to make, make iced coffee in my mind, but cold brew being a different thing, of course. And when, once I made it, I made the first pot, I had a bit of a drink of it and realized I could drink it without any sugar. And light bulb goes off going, I wonder how this will work instead of Coke. And it kind of works. It, it doesn't completely cure the craving but it gives me enough of a buffer that I don't have to go out, I don't have this huge desire to go out and buy Coke all the time. So I don't have any in the house. So if I don't have any in the house, and this kind of takes enough of the craving off, saves the edges off it, then my own personal, whatever level of uh, self-control I have, uh, which isn't always the best, but whatever level I've got is able to kick in and you know prevent me from going out and buying Coke and drinking it. If it's in the house, I'm going to drink it. So that was awesome that it would cut that craving. But was the real surprise 
was I wasn't getting headaches in the or in the afternoon or in the evening because I wasn't wasn't drinking the Coke. So I tried for a little bit in December, and sure enough, it was working, and I saw the weight starting to come down. And of course, I had Christmas, and it uh, yeah, <laughs> it fell down over Christmas because I had Coke and beer and all that kind of fun stuff, and all the turkey and all the other sweets and stuff that are in the house. But so come January third, January fourth, I'm out of Coke in the house. I've refused to go buy some. I start drinking cold brew coffee instead. Weight starts coming down. 11 pounds in January. That's one of the main things I did in January for sure. That that brings me down. And getting the Coke out of the um, out of my diet uh, is a huge starting point. Eventually, I would level off because the rest of everything else I was doing was going to impact me. But that was the first start, first step. Second issue was feeling like I never had time to exercise. So what I did to try and so the issue was is that working here from home, I was never really leaving work. You know, when I was working in the office, I'd probably leave the house about 7.30, get into get into the office 7.45, uh, work till about four o'clock, and then uh, drive home. And by 4.30, I was done and I had that break and I was home. I had a clean break. The drive home was a clean break from work. Working from home, I didn't really have that. I found that I didn't because I didn't have the commute and I was still getting up at the same time. I wasn't changing because initially this was going to be temporary, right? So I didn't change my schedule and I've kept my schedule. My my herding dogs are used to my schedule, so they wouldn't let me sleep in anyway. So I'm still getting up at the usual time, 6:30 ish, um, and they're all fed and all, everything I need to do with them is done by 7 a.m. So I've been starting work earlier. So when I was leaving the house at 7.30, now I'm blogging to work at 7. Still working through till 4. Not really taking any breaks because i um, feeling guilty about taking time off work to do the exercise stuff, especially when I had the exercise stuff doing, um, it taking longer and longer as I added more and more exercises to what I wanted to do each day. And uh, so that was a problem. And then when I was done work at 4, I was never really done. Because I was always near my stuff, and uh, it wasn't unusual for me to be still stuck in meetings till like five o'clock, where I'd start at seven in the morning, and I was still in meetings till five o'clock. And you know, the corporation got like two and a half hours more out of me that day than they were supposed to. That kind of thing. So it's not good. I needed to find a way to break that. So what I started doing on the Big Goofy Runner um, YouTube channel, I'll put a link down below uh, for that one, and. What I started doing in January is that every day after work at four o'clock, I would record a quick vlog video about how my diet was the day, how I felt that day, if I was managing to lose weight, did I manage to exercise, and just five to 10 minute video, quick, unscripted, tuck to the camera, quick edit, put it up on YouTube on that channel. It was good, because what that did is that gave me basically an hour's worth of a break right after work was done, to that was done, and it got my brain working on something else. And it trained my mind to tell me that, hey, you can do your own stuff now. So while I was still starting early, I had that kind of seven o'clock to 7.15 window where I was always starting. That hasn't changed, I'm keeping that locked in. But when I was done at four, I would do this hour's worth of personal work and that would set, set me up to basically know that the rest of the day was mine. That had more likely chance of exercising because as it was like I would get done everything I was doing I'd eat supper I sit down on the couch and I would be a vegetable I was done done there was there was nothing left brain power wise so this for the month of January doing that really helped get me off onto something else and basically gave me back my evenings so that's awesome so it came down 11 pounds um, and that was in January and that was, that was super good, but I also knew I needed to do more. So right here, I'm going to stop. I'm going to put in a thumbnail picture for each of those vlogs, um, that I've done essentially since January till now over there. So, uh, after, after I finished January's daily vlogs, I switched to weekly. So this little, uh, 10 second clip is going to be all the the pictures you can kind of see the weight loss coming down and um the weight kind of coming in there the weight coming down there uh, just looks relatively interesting 
Um, so I'll put that in there. So that dealt with issues one and two. Still needed three and four. So issue three was snacking. The deal with snacking, no, most people would go to a food diary to write down everything you're doing, watch exactly what you're doing, and um, just you know keep track of everything and know exactly how many calories you were pulling in. You could do something about it. That's a lot of work, though. And I part of what I needed to be able to do was make this as simple as I could and as repeatable as I could, because I knew it was going to be months and months and months to get this weight to come down. I wasn't going to do it overnight. But I needed something repeatable, and that meant something I could set up early and follow along. And, yeah, a food diary where I was writing down everything, every little thing I ate through the day, was going to get tedious, and I knew in my brain I was going to break down and not do it. So instead, what I did is I switched up what I was eating, and I made sure that what I was eating was regular every day for at least a couple of the meals or a couple pieces, and that way I didn't need to write that down every day. I only needed to write down anything that was different or out of the ordinary. That reduced the amount of stuff I needed to write down, and it made it uh, tracking much more easy. So what did I do? So I started instead of doing the toast. Now I knew I, yeah, I had time in the morning. I could have made breakfasts, but time always seemed uh, short in the morning. What I did instead is a couple times during the week, I'll make a bunch of hard boiled eggs and my breakfast will be two hard boiled eggs and a protein shake that I would mix. And it's a low calorie protein shake that I just got from Costco. I don't even remember the brand, but it's, uh, basically, I'd have those two eggs, about 13 grams of protein between the two eggs, and 30 grams of protein from the protein shake. And protein would take longer for the system to consume, and it wouldn't get the uh, the insulin kind of glycemic index spike, that kind of stuff. So it would last longer in the system. So instead of being hungry another hour later, in a couple hours I'd be getting close to being a little peckish. And then what I would do is I would hit protein again. I'd have a couple of slices of microwavable bacon, maybe a small piece of cheese or two. And it's more calories, but I'm already pretty calorie deficient at this point because the low calorie protein shake, there's not a huge amount of calories in eggs. Uh, and and while bacon's fatty, there's not massive amounts of uh, uh, calories in two sticks of bacon. There's two strips of bacon. So I needed to, sometimes having the cheese was not bad to get some calories in there because I also didn't want to get into a starvation mode at any point, and that would be working against me as well. And then, of course, with breakfast and through the morning, I wouldn't be having normal coffee. I'd just be having the cold brew coffee, no sugar, no cream, zero calorie essentially, and no headaches, no Coke. So those combined started making February pretty darn good too, um, just doing that stuff. So that, that dealt with item number three. So basically, yeah, so after I would do um, the 9, 30, 10 o'clock bacon strips and snack, I, at lunch I'd have uh, basically a normal lunch. It could be almost anything, a pizza pops or a sandwich. It could be almost anything. I wasn't extremely careful about what I ate there, but I just, just had a regular uh, meal, which is not a big one. So then after that was done, um, you know, I get into the afternoon and... Because I hadn't been hitting the carbs real hard, I wasn't craving carbs. But I generally give myself, and I still do, I'm giving this in a past tense, but this is still what I'm doing right now. But I'd give myself a um, some kind of snack in the afternoon, and that snack could have carbs in it. Especially because after work was done, leading into number four, the exercise part, once work was done, I needed to make sure I had some calories, free calories up in my system so I get on the treadmill right after work. So I primed myself with those daily vlogs, giving myself that hour from work till supper. Now I use that hour instead of for the vlogging for running or getting on the treadmill, whether it's walking, running, or whatever. Initially it was a lot of walking because that treadmill still, but we'll get back into that treadmill. So that got into that. So that really helped as well. So then I was able to fuel through the day and also hit the fuel just when I needed it to do the running. And feeling good, feeling fantastic. That's really uh, helping. So that's really good. But I also know I needed to do more than just the cardio. 
I needed to get doing some weights. I'm a big guy, I've had muscles before, I've done some heavy lifting. I need to do some lifting, otherwise I don't feel like I'm doing anything. So I had mentioned before that I had done a bunch of exercises and a bunch of things that I wanted to do for exercises, but I kept skipping them because I had too many. I had a big stack. So I broke it down. And so what I sat down and did, and this, I started this in February, I broke it down into what are a couple sets of a couple exercises that go together, say like three exercises that go together. So example, my workout number one that I labeled it, and I came up with seven workouts. Workout number one, bicep curls, tricep extensions, and seated military press. Kind of just a general overview of working the upper body. So what I would do is, uh, decided what I would do is that when I'd have a couple minutes break or a couple seconds break here and there through the day, I would stop, get up, and what would normally be a stretch break because if you work in an office all the time, they tell you to take stretch breaks and all that kind of stuff. Normally, instead of the stretch break, I'd get up and I'd take a, a pair of 30-pound dumbbells and I'd do that workout number one, just one set. And it might be um, eight bicep curls each arm, tri same for the triceps, same for the military press. And I put the weights down. One set of each exercise, put the weights down, get back to work. Now, I'm not feeling guilty about taking that break because I needed to take that time to, to really stretch anyway and I didn't get stiff and stay healthy, right? So it was not bad. So I ended up coming up with seven different um, exercise sets or workouts, as I called them. And different ones, I mean, one of the workouts is simply push-ups. But I just kind of took those seven and went... Okay, I'll do one, three, and uh, one, three, and five on Monday. On Tuesday, I'll do two, four, and six, uh, and just kind of spread that all out throughout the the week so that I'm not hitting the same muscle group every single day, and you know that way I've got some things in there that it's not burning a lot of calories. It's not necessarily building any muscle or any real strength, but it's moving the joints, it's moving the ligaments, it's getting a little bit of a burn and it's it's waking up those, the system and getting metabolism going. Yeah, so then the running thing after work, I started by, because what I know about running is from marathon training. So I grabbed a novice training program for a marathon, not with any kind of marathon in plan, like any race planned or anything like that because I can't really plan anything right now, but just to give myself a starting place for uh, judging what my uh, fitness level is left over for running and stuff like that, or building that up. And so I started slotting those runs into that hour break now after work as best I could. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, there was these runs, and then I might walk the other days, that kind of thing. So slotted those in there. Saturday then was a longer run generally, and just kind of uh, tracked those through. And uh, that worked really well for the first while between those. Uh, the, both the, the weights and the running. Then on top of all that, every morning, and I've been doing this for over two years now, every morning I do a set of chin-ups, a set of push-ups, and a set of tricep dips, or a, just a set of dips. And it's not a lot, like three, five, ten of them, that kind of thing. All depends on where my brain is that day. But it's just, it's a wake-up thing as opposed to I'm getting stronger. Because you don't do the same exercise every day and expect to get stronger at it. It just doesn't work that way. It's not definitely not the efficient, most efficient way to do it. So do those on top of everything else. Um, yeah, and that, that's worked well. Then back to the running and the treadmill I mentioned before. And what I was finding is that it seemed like every time I got on the treadmill to run, I got a little bit worse. And it, it's been a thing that's been happening for years with this particular treadmill. This treadmill has other issues too. It's non-responsive sometimes for button presses and things like that, which can be scary if you're trying to slow it, slow it down and it doesn't slow down when you want, or it takes off on you, you hit the button to go up a little bit faster and it goes four miles an hour faster and that kind of stuff. So it, definitely issues with it, but there was something about, I think the way the deck was that every step you put on it, it sucked the energy out of the run. Every step was much harder and I, uh, than it needed to be. And normally you think that would help you get stronger. But what I found is that it was actually mentally and physically exhausting because I was 10 to 
worse than it would have been on a different treadmill or if I was outside even. This thing was actually worse than being outside, which is the opposite of what you normally expect from a treadmill. So it just was awful. And um, what culminated into deciding to finally replace it, like we kept saying that we were just going to try and drive it into the ground and then just get rid of it. Uh, and the fact that it lasted this long, you would think meant that it was very robust. But the problem was that we just weren't putting the miles on it because we did it, both of us, both my wife and I. So what happened was one day I got into doing 11 miler, which I wasn't really ready for in the marathon training program. I knew I wasn't ready, but it took forever. And I got when I got off the treadmill, I was utterly dead. I never wanted to run again. And I knew that wasn't right because that's just not the way the running treats my body generally and that day we ordered a new treadmill that that was it we're done two weeks later we had the new treadmill and um, yeah see the link in the description there's a uh, unboxing and a assembly of that treadmill uh video here on the channel uh that uh if you're looking to put together a treadmill it uh i follow the steps <laughs> so uh but yeah testing out that treadmill and using that treadmill night and day mental attitude change and it changed my running world since i'm running faster i'm getting speed work in i'm getting off the treadmill tired and worked but energized and i never got that off that other treadmill in six years of trying to use it and continually failing and it's funny because you can track back when we got that treadmill exactly the time my running went like that so, that sucked uh wish i'd realized this earlier uh, but new treadmill really helped. It's got, I've done some, a 10 miler on it, done some longer runs on it. Um, but I'll get into the marathon training program in a minute too. And I start talking more about some of the mental game. Yeah. So then with the new treadmill, I saw that I felt that I still was, while I wasn't dreading doing any runs, the short runs, I was actually kind of looking forward to sometimes I was still dreading the long runs. And I realized that I would actually dread the long run the entire week and it had the ch the risk of uh, having me blow off the run completely. And that was just bad in general. I just couldn't have that. Uh, so I realized what I needed to do was to break those long runs up. So instead of running four days a week with one really long run, it was five days a week with that long run split in two. And then that way I was getting the risk of blowing off the entire long run and losing all those miles and those calories burned for the week reduced. That's part of the mental game as I realized I wasn't ready to do where my plan said I needed to be, but I accepted that made a hard, it was a hard choice because I didn't want to give up, but I needed to make that choice so that I could stick with the weight loss. And that was the goal, right? The, the goal was to do the weight loss, not marathon training. Marathon training is coming later once I get the weight down farther. That's leading into the kind of the unspoken, unmathematical part of the weight loss calculation, right? We, um, eating better, losing, you know, getting, cutting out calories and exercising more. That's the main calculation. That's the math part. Mental part is the other part. And how do you keep the mental thing going? Cause it's, if you need to lose a lot of weight, it's months, it's lots of time. It takes time and you need to be consistent. How do you do that? Watching what I'm doing and tracking what I'm doing is huge. Data is key. So I record or write down pretty much everything. Now I used to record, even when I was on my bad times, I recorded everything, but I put it places that I didn't necessarily see. So, you know, if I used a run keeper program or track my run or something like that, that data would go into that app and I'd never look at it again. And I'd never think about whether or not I was getting better or getting worse. In 2014, when I was at my peak, every one of those runs instead went into a treadmill where I looked at average speeds. Uh, I tracked the shoe mileage so I knew when I had to toss out some shoes. And um, it was, did I do more miles or less than I planned that week? And it was in a format that was easy for me to digest without looking at my phone. It was on a graph. It set a, on a spreadsheet, essentially. It was... It was just the way my brain is set to work with data. I use spreadsheets for data, not an app. So I had to make that 
change and make sure I was tracking everything. So what do I do for tracking everything? Because, yeah, like I said before, for the uh, the uh, food diary, tracking everything can be difficult and it can be tedious. So I spent some time prepping a bunch of little tools and things like that that I could use that now as I go on, I just need to fill in the data. I don't need to build everything, each, anything each month or anything like that. I just, I just write down the numbers and it gives me something that I can track back against. So what am I doing? First off, since um, work, it started working from home, I created a Microsoft OneNote book, um, a journal for everything that was going on um, here at home and everything that happened since yeah, I started working from home. And I basically have a week with headings for each day and I just kind of write down what happened each day. And um, it uh, basically because we are living through somebody's history lesson and I wanted to track where I was mentally, physically, and what was happening for us during those periods. So I started that like day one of, the, uh, of my first work from home day. So I figured I would utilize that to help track my data and, and also help motivate me because I started Big Goofy Runner in 2012. I started tracking stuff on Word documents, then in WordPress, in WordPress posts on the blog, things like that. I started tracking that stuff. I started doing the similar thing, but just in one note, essentially for myself initially, but it's also been going up on the Big Goofy Runner uh, YouTube channel. So what I did was after I'd figured out what my different uh, workouts I was going to do, the workouts I talked about before, what each of those workouts were going to be for the day, uh, I set that up for a weekly plan. So only weekdays do I do these, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. <laughs> That's the five days of the week, um, the work days. Uh, but what I did is I basically made a template of uh, the date, the actual date, uh, a couple little places for tracking a couple things I track every day and check boxes for each of those workout routines. So, and so I did that for the whole week and I just copy and pasted that and I made weeks and weeks out. I think I've got uh, pre-made out to uh, like beginning of July and I did that at the beginning of February. So all I need to do now each week is when the week starts, go in, I write in my weight, I check that I did my chin-ups, and as I go through the day, I check off, uh, I did my workout one, I did my workout two, I did my workout three, and I just check those off. So at the end of the day, I look over at that one note on uh, my personal computer, and if I don't have one of the check boxes done, I just do that quickly right at the end of the day. It'll get it done. That's not the whole purpose for that. The idea is to actually take those breaks through the day and do it so it gets spread and you keep the metabolism up through the whole day. But at least I'm getting it done no matter what. And generally I do get it done. For the, that's good. Also on there, I'll write in, that's where my food diary kind of stuff happens. So I don't write down my hard boiled eggs and protein shake for breakfast. I don't write down the, uh, the bacon at, you know, 10 o'clock or whatever, because those are normal. So I, I don't waste the time writing those down because those are what basically happens every single day. What I do write down is anything that's different, anything that I had for lunch, Anything that stands out to me that as a bit of a different thing I had, like I let myself have a chocolate bar, those kind of things. I write that down and um, that basically tracks all that stuff. Then my weight, like I've mentioned, I put it on there, but I also started graphing it. So earlier you did actually see a graph, current tracking. Current tracking is the one I want to show. So this one here especially. So this uh, orangey line is uh, basically two pounds a week. So I put down as a goal line, something to follow. And this is right from January 1, 2021. Uh, and I followed it as I went down. There was a couple spikes. There were uh, other places where I went up. And then now I've kind of stuck at this. I've gotten up to this gap above that hasn't rectified. So that was an actual mess up in my weight loss routine. But because I was writing everything down, I was able to go back and go, ah, uh, right here. This was right around Easter and like, yeah, in that period, 
There was different holiday things going on, probably eight more. But I also was having a few more low-carb beers than I had normally been having. I might have one in a night and nothing nothing bad happens on the, the chart. I still keep losing weight. But if I have two on Friday night, two on Saturday night, and two on Sunday, it's not a huge amount, but it looks it feels like it added up because on Mondays and Tuesdays I would see these spikes in my weight. So that all kind of added up. But buying having it in these charts where I'm tracking it and I'm looking at these every day, keeping me motivated, I'm seeing that I've come down. So if I have a couple days where I do a little spike up, I can usually track it back. I understand what it was. And I can keep going. I don't shut down. I don't go, hey, what the fuck happened? I'm done. Screw this. This isn't working. I see that the trend is proper. This is an anomaly based on some certain food or something I've changed. Figure out what that is. Rectify it. Keep going. Able to do fine-tuning minor changes as I go along. And it keeps going. Yeah, the visualization really helps. This here is an example of, the, well, this is next week's template of how I'm going to track my stuff in OneNote. So I'll get up in the morning, I'll put my weight here, then I will go and put my, you know, check that make sure I have did my chip ups to keep the streak going. Uh, and then I will, everything else I do through the day, I'll just kind of insert between these check boxes in here. And then as I go through the day, I'll just check off these check boxes as I do the different exercises. And if I do anything else, like say I do a plank that day, I'll write that in. Just basically tracking all the little things, uh, things I eat, all that kind of stuff, all gets put on here as one source so I can see what I did in a particular day. If I lost more weight one day than I would have thought, maybe I can track it back on here and what caused it, what didn't, that kind of thing. Uh, and then here's an example of one that I got filled out. So, uh, on April, you know, I was this April 30th, I was this weight. I did seven chin ups. Um, I went outside for 20 minutes at one point in the morning to help the neighbor with the fence. Uh, I did a plank, uh, kind of mentioned what I had for lunch, which wasn't much. And then pizza showed up. So I had more and I had some more pizza later for supper. Uh, mentioned what my stack snack was the time I spent on the treadmill. Plus I also have the treadmill miles written down at the bottom and Mentioned that I had a beer, a chocolate bar, and a slice of pizza. It was a crappy diet day, and I marked that there, keeping myself honest. But yeah, so that was a lot of stuff. Hopefully there's something in there for everybody, uh, or something for somebody at least. You know, somebody is like, how do I do this? And they get an idea. That was a lot of stuff. So let's now talk, let's try to do a quick conclusion here. So uh, there will be chapters in this, so... If uh, you watched all the way, thank you for getting this far. Uh, if you skipped ahead in the chapters, hello again. But, so let's do a quick recap. So, I reduced my calories consumed. Number one thing that I needed to do was reduce the calories consumed. That was Coke. And somehow cold brew coffee, no sugar, dark, uh, just black cold brew coffee, fixed that craving enough that my willpower can overcome what I feel is an addiction. And then I also changed my uh, breakfast routine to hit more protein, and that's reduced snacking. But that was one of the things I didn't mention on the snacking is that I don't snack after 8.30. It's not uh, anything to do with the intermittent fasting or anything like that. That is solely me understanding that, say, if I have a snack at 9.30 at night, it's likely to be cookies or something high calorie. So I just don't let myself eat anything after 8.30 just to prevent that. And luckily that usually works. So awesome. Um, increases then number two was increasing calories expended. The other side of that equation, the math equation. Um, so yeah, the light weightlifting exercises, definitely good. The running, definitely good. Recognizing that the treadmill was crap so that I didn't blow off the running and got the running going again properly. Those were all my big piece there. Uh, and then the mental push. It's the prep, setting all the data up in such a way that I can visualize, I can visualize the changes that are occurring. But if I do have a step back, I can see that it already made three steps forward. So that step back, not great, 
but I haven't fallen off the path. Still on the path, I can keep going. So being able to visualize that is huge. And then by that journaling I do also tracks my mental state. I can see how I'm writing things down, catching problems, and I can see that, yeah, maybe I do need a break from running today. Maybe I'll move the Thursday run to Friday. Just giving myself the, the ability to be flexible. You'll have, need to follow enough of the plan to be consistent, because if you're not consistent, it's not going to work. But if it's ri too rigid for me, it's going to fall apart. That's just how it is. So try and avoid that. I try to. Yeah, basically, I need to be flexible on my plan. So, and that's really helped the mental push. But yeah, being able to visualize the data and getting all those templates and stuff prepped ahead of time. Now all I need to do is put in pieces. So I'm consistent with my diet, by not ha so I don't have to write that stuff down. There's one piece I'm not going to fall down on. Things like that. It's just trying to keep things regular, trying to keep things on a bit of a routine, and writing down the stuff that's abnormal. That seems to work. That is my big one. If you take nothing else away from this, I mean, if you are having an issue with coke like I was, maybe try cold brew coffee. No sugar. I don't know. Working for me, but everybody's different. And there's absolutely no science that I have to back up why it's working for me. But it is. So <laughs> that's just the way it is. What other things to look at? Well, I mean, with all this working from home stuff and things like that, and you're trying to exercise and things like that, you, you, you know, normally if you were, say, working in an office, you were losing weight, you'd get somebody in the office kind of giving you encouragement. So at home, wife is great. She's, she's on a, a health journey as well. And she's, you know, encouragement there as well, too. Not just encouragement. It's encouragement in the right way. I'm an introvert. And if you go to me, yeah, yeah, you're doing great. You're doing great. I'm going to go, I don't want to do that again because I don't want you talking to me anymore. So the right encouragement is, oh, that's doing good. Good job. That, that, nice. That is the encouragement that I particularly need. But search out the people that are going to give you the encouragement you want, you need. And that will help too. That helps the mental game. Um, by way more than we can realize. So even us introverts are social machines. So there we go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm going to end that lecture there and shut this one down. So hopefully this was useful for somebody and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. More videos coming on all sorts of places. So here on the Big Goofy Runner and Family channel, um, this is where we do a bunch of our family stuff. We do unboxing, some tech stuff, some things like uh, that there's a bunch of kids stuff on here from uh, a while back. We this is where we'll do our Disney stuff once we can travel again. So there's a bunch of travel stuff. Uh, so have a look around. Um, but yeah, definitely look for the uh, the treadmill unboxing and put together video. We'll be very shortly doing a. We've had the treadmill for six weeks, so we're going to do a six weeks um, review uh, of the treadmill coming up soon too. And then over on the Big Goofy Runner um, channel. Uh, that's where I'm doing my weekly vlogs about my exercising, and I can get into more details than this. Uh, it's where I can ask, you know, answer more questions and things like that. So feel free to hop over there and follow over there. Uh, on Twitter, I'm Big Goofy Runner. Um, so yeah, uh, check me out there as well, because that's where I'll I'll kind of post out that there's new videos and things like that too. But anyway, yeah. Uh, if you've got uh, any comments on, uh, you know think uh, of what I am doing and if there's uh, you know what's your running journey or your uh, health journey like right now give me comments down below and uh, yeah we'll uh, have the conversation all good for everybody but anyway thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.